We're so glad to be here with you. Listen, this is a Sunday that is to be remembered. This is an awesome time to actually be amongst the believers, to be amongst the saints of God on this Father's Day. Amen. So I want to go into the I want to go to a moment of prayer, then we're going to go into the Word of God, and we're going to hear thus saith the Lord and what He has to speak to our hearts on this day. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord Jesus. We say thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way on this time. We honor you for all that you're doing at this time. We honor you for all that are watching and listening at this time. Father, I pray that you would minister, oh God, to the hearts of fathers and sons, Lord God. God, I pray that you would reach, oh God, those, Lord God, that have not heard you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you would minister and store up, oh God, on the inside of them, your precious, your precious, your precious riches, Father God, that come from knowing you. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would encourage, Lord God. God, I pray that you would provoke, Lord God. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would cause after this message somebody to rise up and to do something that they had not done before. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that there will be change in the hearts of men, Lord God. There will be change in the minds of loved ones, Father God. And I pray, oh God, that your tender mercies will be seen in it all. We say thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even today, I come before you now. I'm excited. Listen, I, myself, am a son. I have the blessing of uh, my father uh, uh, and my brothers and those that that I love, and even I have a son, I have sons, amen. And so this message is very special to me. It is something of great, that brings me great joy to actually share with you all on this Father's Day, amen. And so today what I wanna talk about is, I wanna talk about, come on daddy. Come on daddy. Um, I'm gonna read from a passage of scripture that we've heard Many times before, we have an idea, a clue of what we, uh, what the scripture is saying. We have an idea of what is taking place. But go with me as I uh, take a moment just to share as I believe the Lord has given me on this day. Will you please go with me to Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11 through 19. Verse 11, uh, Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11, it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of this state. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant country. And there squandered his wealth in while living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Verse 17. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. In verse 19, for I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Amen. This story, this, this uh, parable that Jesus tells, uh, we, we often look at it and we look at it from the standpoint of the father, how how bad and how um, the son is treated. The father, um, but what about the son? 
if we were to look at this from the standpoint of the son's perspective, uh, he had he had found himself in a place where he was at home with dad and and everything was going as as it seemed that it should be. But somehow or another, the son seemed to be dissatisfied. Somehow or another, it seemed like things were not going exactly as the son would have uh, desired. Because one day he rose up and he asked his father, can I get my share? Give me my part because I want to go. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to do something else. You've taught me. I've learned. And now I'm ready. The son, he, he might have saw flaws in his father. Inconsistencies, things that we, the scripture doesn't talk about. This, this is Eldridge's imagination right now, amen? He might have saw inconsistencies. He could have seen flaws in the father's, or what he thought was inconsistencies or flaws in the father's judgments. And decided that I need to do it my way. I need to do something different. I need to go about this in a different way. I need to find out what life is really about because maybe he felt that he was missing out on something. Or maybe he was being held back. Or maybe something was just missing. One of the things that we begin to see about this, this, this parable is, is that we, we recognize that, that the son, he, he comes to the father, he asks the father for that which he felt was his, rightfully his. Jesus, he, he, in the midst of this, in the midst of, uh, Jesus throws this parable in the midst of him telling two other parables prior to this. And these other parables, these two parables that he actually shared before this, he shared uh, parables of, of lost things. This was a parable of lost things. Things that had been lost, but things that had been lost. But the, if you lose something insignificant, if you lose something without any uh, value, it does not make a difference. But he talked about things that were lost of great value. He gives, he gives a parable of a, a sheep, which represented in that day, it represented the, 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 the finances, the value, and the, 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 the income, and the wealth of an individual, of a sheep being lost, livestock. He also tells a parable of a coin being lost. And he gives, he gives an example that the person that lost the coin, they actually sweep the house. They tear everything upside down because why? That which was lost was lost of great value. It, it, it needed to be recovered. It needed to be found. It's like losing your car keys and it's time to go to work. It, it, it's, it's like, it's like uh, uh, you've been in the store and you say, where's my little boy? And you, you, you're looking for him or you're my little girl and you're looking for him to find out where they are. It was, it was those things of great value that were lost. But one of the things that all of these stories that they had in common was these parables, they were dealing with something that was lost, yet the owners were not willing to stop looking until they found it. That was the key. The owner was not willing to stop looking until they found it. So now you have a son, a, a son that has, has grown into age. He's, he's a man. He's coming to a place now that he no longer, he needs everything handed to him. And so now he comes to a place and he, he sees that, that I, he, maybe he thinks within himself, I can do it better. You say, this is Father's Day. What does this have to do with Father's Day? Well, uh, part of what took place in this story is, is that we begin to see that the son uh, or the father in this story, sometimes we can look at the story and say, well, the father, he shouldn't have let him go. He shouldn't have gave it to him. He shouldn't have encouraged this bad behavior. He shouldn't have encouraged him to actually do what he did because when the son came and said, give me my stuff, the father could have refused and said, not now, you're not ready for it yet because you know, every parent, they know their child. 
They know what they can handle. They know where they are. They know uh, how their mind thinks. They know their maturity level. They know what is taking place. And so now uh, the father, he could have resisted a little bit harder. But what if the father was looking for something greater? What if the father actually realized and knew the value of the son that the son didn't know the value of himself? What if the father knew that, that, that there needed to be some, some learning and some lessons that would actually come about to cause the son to be the best that the son needed to be? So what we begin to see is that the son, he, 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 he puts himself in position and what he does is, is he, he gathers his stuff and the first thing that he does after he receives what he receives of the father is he tries to get as far away from his father as possible. We recognize that the son, in his thinking, he was not where he was supposed to be. We recognize that, that he did not realize the magnitude of kindness, care, generosity, love that had been being expressed to him. I, I think somehow or another he had took it that this is normal. This is what everybody has. This is how it goes for everybody. And we recognize that the son, he begins to take it upon himself that this is what I deserve. This is what rightfully is mine. This is how it goes. This son in this story is also known as the prodigal son. He, he finds himself coming to a place in his journey after leaving, spending his money and all that he had, that there was really a need there was really a need of humbling himself to his father. Amen. Yes. We recognize that in this story, the father is a picture of God himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oftentimes, we, we, because we can't see God, we kind of treat him any kind of way. We kind of feel that I deserve this and I need this and I want this. And then we kind of do our own thing until we come into a place yes. that we realize that there's a need for humbling ourselves yes. back to the Father. Amen. After dishonoring his father with his request or giving him of giving him his inheritance, everything that he would have given him when the father would have died, the selfish, arrogant son, his act was almost as harsh as saying. Give me what I want and I don't care how it affects you. Hmm. The son left his father's house only to throw it away. Yes. Only to throw it away. What was the father thinking? What was the father thinking? Why didn't he make him stay? Why didn't he stop him? Why didn't he delay him? Why didn't he prolong him? Yes. Why did he let him go? With all this rudeness and this, 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 this uh, unconsiderate activities and these things that the son was doing to show the father. Disrespect and dishonor. Why did the father go along with it? You see, the father understood that his son was not lost because he left. He was already lost before he left. He understood that his son, there were some things that his son needed to to learn and some, some things that his son needed to comprehend uh, that, that his point of view of life was wrong. 
We begin to see that his point of view was wrong because what we begin to see is that we see uh, the son, he comes to the father and says, Father, give me my share of the estate. My share of the estate. Give me what I've earned. Give me what belongs to me. Give me what's mine. Now, you recognize that, that the father all belongs to the father. Everything. Amen. Amen. But the son is coming, and, and in his mindset, he said that I deserve this. Amen. That there's no way that I should receive what I'm receiving. Amen. There's no way that I should not have what I'm longing for. Yes. And regardless, give it to me. Amen. Isn't that like God that oftentimes we'll find ourselves in a position where literally that we're, 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 we're actually doing our thing and we're really waiting for God to slow us down and stop us and to keep us and to hold us back and to prevent us from doing what's wrong because you know that in the eyes of God that this is not the direction that he wants you to go in and yet it still he allows you to go. Yes. Uh, can I tell you that God will not force Himself on you. Hallelujah. God will not make you do what you do not want to do. Hallelujah. That God's love is free and it is it is something that He gives and He offers yes. to us. Amen. Yes. Free will. Free will. Mm -hmm. Free will. Without restraint. Free will. Free will. And then what happens is, is that at times what the father will do is he'll allow us to come all the way to the end of our road where we find ourselves like the son did in verse 14. After he had spent everything that was, a severe famine came in the country and he began to be in need. He allows us to come to that place where, where we begin to realize and recognize that, that, that it, it, it's not normal. This is not, it's normal for my father's house, but it's not normal for the world. Yes. But maybe the father was working on something. Maybe the father was actually building in a direction that the son could not see. And maybe the father was working on something that we actually did not see. The son, he finds himself coming into a place where he began to meet. He found himself going throughout the city. Now, now he comes into need, but guess what he doesn't do? He doesn't humble himself. Amen. I'm going to fix it myself. I'm going to work it out myself. I'm going to make... There's nothing wrong with a man being a man. There's nothing wrong with a man standing up and saying, I'm not going to allow this situation to, to, to wipe me out. I'm going to actually deal with it. And I'm going to set it in order. But he found himself in a position. He had left with no humility. And now he finds himself in need. And he's, a, he's in a strange land. And he, he's high, he, he allows himself to be hired to a citizen that in that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. Now you know that that's already wrong, right? Jesus is a Jew talking to Jews and we talking about pigs. So now he had reached his lowest now. That I, I can't find nothing else. I can't find no other way. I can't find no other solution. So I'm going to put myself in a position that I'll come to a place and I will feed the pigs if necessary. But then the verse goes on and says, in verse 16, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Now look, he, was, he wanted a job. And he figured that if I work with the pigs and feed the pigs, then I would actually eat. I would actually be able to eat what they eat. But the Bible says no one gave him anything. But isn't it like God to give us just enough time 
to get things in order. Because verse 17 says, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here am I starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The son, he finds himself that literally that, that now he's in need. And the only way out is back to the father. Amen. Amen. But he has to come correct. Humility. The scripture says humility comes before honor. Yes. That he would have to humble himself in order to get right back in right standing with the father. Now we recognize that the son's thinking was wrong. The father recognized the son's thinking was wrong. But one, he thought that he deserved what didn't belong to him. Yes. That is the second part of the son's wrong thinking. He says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. How many of us know that love is greater than that? Love is deeper than that? That, that when you're family, amen, we're talking about family, we're talking about real family, y'all. We're not talking about fighting and fussing. We're not talking about feuding and shooting. We're talking about when you're family, I love you not because of what you do. I love you because we blood. I love you because of your name. I love you because of who you are. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Have we ever got into a place with God where we felt like we found ourselves in a position that I am no longer worthy? God, I've done it too many times. God, I've said sorry too many. God, I'm tired of saying sorry for the same old thing. God, I've been here and I don't know how to get out of here. And I'm standing doing it. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Been there. Been there. Lord, any way you accept me, any way you take me, any way you bring me back, God, I'll come. This is what is needed. Can I, can I use my imagination again from the father's perspective? Could it be that the father was working on a daddy? Could it be that the father was working on a man? Could it be that the father was working on a husband? And he recognized that this man would not be beneficial to anybody else but himself if he had not had the proper training, if he had not had the proper lessons, yes. that, that maybe that, that his son, that he recognized that his thinking was wrong and he recognized that there was a way that he needed to go and, and maybe the father trusted God, that God would actually bring the son back to be okay. That maybe he prayed that God would actually keep the son so that the son would be all right and that the Lord would monitor him even in his ways that he would take that the father was working on a man. Amen. I, I want to encourage the fathers today. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you that, that your sons, they're looking to you. Yes. And sometimes we want to give them everything we never had. Amen. We want to give them everything that we never received. Yes. Sometimes there's a guilt that comes on us like, that, that, that uh, when, we, when we haven't been able to do as we wanted to do, mothers experienced this too, but we're talking to the fathers today, that, that you haven't been able to do like you really wanted to do for them. And, and so you don't know what to give them and you don't know how to give it to them. And we try to give them yeah, amen, amen. everything, yes. but you know the result of it. I, I, I'm praying that the fathers today that, that you would ask God, Father, 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 Daddy, would you pray that you would ask God to help you raise a daddy? Yes. A daddy that would come? Yes. Yes. See, see, when you when you say father, father, uh, the word father, one of the definitions of a father is a source. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. The definition of a father is a source. Right? 
But a daddy comes into a place of intimacy. Yes. A daddy comes into a place. So, so there are fathers that are able to give. There are fathers that are able to do. But unable to become close. Unable to become intimate. Unable to actually minister. If we live this life long enough, what we're going to recognize is that we're going to see people in different stages of life. Amen. We're going to see people when they're good. Amen. We're going to see people when they're not so good. Amen. And if you stay around long enough, you're going to see them at their worst. Yes. But what happens is, is that in that intimacy, we never stop loving. We never stop caring. We continue to pour in. And sometimes the things or the decisions or the way that things are done may look confusing. But if you got God leading you, if you got God directing you, if you got God on your side, then what's going to happen is, is that son or father, that daughter, amen, she's going to make it. But there is a need for daddy. There is a need for intimacy. There is a need for closeness. To actually minister, to share, to build up, to stir up, to encourage yes. our children. Yes. We cannot leave the raising of our children to the school systems. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We cannot leave, leave the raising of our children to, to the educational system where, 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 they, where different things are being taught and different ways are being expressed. And, and what we have to actually love our children and put the values in that we've received. Amen. And sometimes what we receive from mama now and daddy now, it wasn't good. It didn't even work. They did some stuff that we remember. We need to go back to Almighty God. Teach us how. Teach us how to love our children. Teach us how to raise our sons. Teach us how to father our daughters. See, the son here found himself that he needed to come to a place of acknowledging that he had to be humble. And he had to humble himself if he was going to live a life of purpose. All the father had did was he had lived to bring all these things together that the son might receive. One day. All of the father's efforts were to actually see that the son would be have a have a stability. But what was happening was the son, he had, even in the midst of everything, he was living below the standard of his father. In the midst of everything, the son, his mind was below what it was his father really had for him. Amen. He had looked at his current condition. He had looked at his, his current situation when he found himself in trouble and he says, I'm going to arise and I'm going to say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. This was his prayer that he would pray. What he didn't know was his father had never stopped looking for him. His father had never changed the value of who he was. The father had never seen him different. Because his love for him was not based on what he was able to do, what he did, or what he didn't do. His love for him was based on who he was. Amen. You see, when the son found himself, the father, he saw the son precious. That that was his real rich, his real riches, his real treasure. Just like the son was precious to the father in this parable, that's how we're precious to our father. Amen. Almighty God. Amen. 
This is how the father was able to respond as quickly as he did. The Bible says that the son, he was coming back and he was rehearsing over and over again. Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth. Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth. I'm going to tell him that. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to say it to him. Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth. And please take me back. Hopefully. Please, please, daddy. And, and, and help me. Please, please. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. But because of the way the father saw the son, he had never stopped looking. The Bible says that the father, he stood at a distance. And, 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 and he saw the son coming. Now, I, I don't believe that the, son, the father stayed out there 24 hours a day. I believe that every day he set a watch. Amen. He went to a place to see, is this the day that my son will return? Amen. He knew that when he left, he was coming back. Yes. By faith. Amen. He knew that his son would come to his senses. And he wasn't going to lose his mind by actually going through these trials and these tests. Father, I'm not telling you to put your son out. I'm not telling you to, to treat your son in a manner that, to send him off on his way. But I say, Father, be careful to continue to watch over your son. Watch over your daughter. Watch over them with the eyes of love. Watch over them with the heart of their value and how precious they are to you. And, and that, that, they, that they're not just children that are birthed, but they are those that will be your treasures Amen. in the days to come. Amen. When the father, he saw the son at a distance. He went to him. In the custom of the day, it was rare. The man of God, the man of God, it was rare. Because senior, the, 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 the father's position and the father's role was that, that you come to me. Because of honor. Amen. But the Bible says that the father ran to the son. Amen. Wrapped his arms around him. To, to express his love. Now, now the father, he, he gives a command. Immediately. Amen. Everybody gets to move. He gives a command. He, and everybody begins to work on what the father commands. He gives a command. But do you not know that the father already had the son prepared for the son? Amen. He was already waiting for the son to return. That, that it wasn't like, go get the cow that we just bought last week. No, no he already had one set aside. It, it wasn't like, go get the robe that, that, we just, that I just got. At. No, we already had it put to the side. Yes. From day one, I knew. Yes. Amen. Yes. Fathers, we must be patient. Yes. Fathers, I got to encourage you. Stay. Don't leave. Yes. Don't leave. I, I think some of the greatest marriages I've heard are those they say maybe 50 years in and there was a rough patch somewhere in there. There was a season when I was almost done. I almost threw in the towel. I was almost gone. Amen. But I stayed a little longer. Yes. Fathers, stay. Don't leave. Don't leave. Raise your children. Amen. Amen. Fathers, get counseling. Yes. Get assistance. Get some help. Yes. Get a mediator. Yes. But stay. Amen. Yes. Stay. Yes. Because you're raising the next generations of daddies. Yes. Those that would actually come into a place of intimacy with their children. Those that would actually come into a place of intimacy and knowing their identity of who they are. Children take their identity from their mother and their father. Yes. Yes. And too often times, especially, I must say, in the black community, fathers are not present. Yes. And the only identity that they have is that which has been given to them based on what they've been told of who the father is. How well the father was. Fathers, there may be a, a season in you actually 
coming to a place to raise your children. That you may humble, your, you may have to humble yourself to the Lord. That you humble yourself to res the responsibility of your family. Amen. You see, we have to really find out what's really valuable. Yes. What's really important. Sometimes we're chasing after stuff, we get stuff, and we think that I can do better. I can have more. And sometimes you got the greatest thing right before you. Amen. Amen. See, one of the things that we recognize is just as the son had returned home, the father was already ready to receive the son. The Lord is ever attentive Amen. to us. Amen. That even when we find ourselves getting away, he's ready to receive us. Yeah. He's ready to receive us with love and arms. Amen. But what he's waiting on is a change of heart. Yes. He's waiting on a change of heart. Yeah. Father, I'm, I'm encouraging you to raise up some daddies. Fathers, I'm encouraging you to raise up some mommies. Amen. Fathers, I'm encouraging you to, to give everything that you have to raise your children. Fathers, I want to honor you this day because oftentimes, they, um, I heard my father say yesterday, he said, uh, one of the busiest times of the year is when phone calls and text messages are going through throughout the year. It is not Christmas. It is Mother's Day. But when it comes to honoring fathers, oftentimes we get a text from another man wishing us a happy Father's Day as a word of encouragement. If you got men in your life like that, I just want to encourage the father. I want to speak to your heart and I want to encourage you that your children are not accidents. Amen. Amen. And so your love must be intentional. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you that even if you and the mom are not able to fully work things out, make room make space that you might be in the child's life or the children's life. Do not give up. Keep love. Amen. Keep help. Amen. Sometimes fathers stop helping because mama not acting right. No. It's not the child's fault. Keep loving. Yes. Keep helping. Yes. Remain attentive. Amen. Because the children will grow. And oftentimes the thing that they the things that they remember is what you've done. Father, if you're trying to make your way back into a child's life after years of not being around. Be patient. Yes. Don't come in immediately com commanding and giving orders. Be patient. Yes. Some things may have to be earned. Yes. Yes. Like trust. Because yes. they may have so many different things that were said, things that they don't understand, reasons, Emotions, be patient. Amen. Then finally, I want to encourage your fathers. Be consistent. Yes. Hallelujah. Not every now and then. You must be consistent. You yes. must be consistent. Yes. You yes. must be consistent yes. in the loving of your children. Yes. yes. Amen. Finally, I just want to say. 
Happy Father's Day. Let me pray a prayer. I believe there are those under the sound of the voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, Lord, save me. Save me. I receive, I receive my, salvation my salvation now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me pray another prayer. Father, I pray for those fathers that are longing to see their children. That have been unable to reach them or see them. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would make a way. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, for those fathers that are home with their children. But the unrest, the lack of peace, Lord God, is urging them, Father God, to find a way out. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would send comfort, you would send help from the sanctuary, that you would send peace, you would send rest, Lord God, you would send a mediator, you would send mentors, Lord God, but God, that you would keep the house together. Yes. Oh God, that the children might be raised with their father. God, I pray that you would break the patterns of the past, that Papa was a rolling stone and 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 It has been a tradition of men not taking care of their children. Amen. I pray, Father, that you would lay it upon the hearts of the fathers hearing me now. And I pray, Father God, that there would be a deep compassion towards their children. Amen. To love them. Amen. To build. Oh, God. And to cause their children, Father God, to, to desire to see their children raise up to be men and women of God. God, I thank you, Lord God, for the fathers. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're going to meet the need, Lord. Give them wisdom, just as you gave this father wisdom, on what to do and how to do it. Yes. Everybody doesn't need the same response. Yes. But give them wisdom according to their child. Amen. Lord, let not the fathers provoke their children to wrath. Amen. But God, that they would strengthen them, Father God. That they would encourage them, Father. Yes. Yes. That they would minister to them life. I thank you, Lord. I bless your name, Father. I thank you for causing these fathers to experience your love in a way that they might share your love with others. We say thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I believe that somebody prayed that prayer, and if you prayed that prayer, listen, all I can do is say, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, hallelujah, 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 all heaven rejoice. Listen, two things I want to encourage you to do. First thing I want to encourage you to do is I got to encourage you to get you a Bible. You cannot live out your Christian faith and live this Christian life without the word of God. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It causes you to know God. It causes you to understand his ways. It causes us to grow in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. We need faith to be a Christian. Amen. And his word produces faith in our lives. Second thing I want to encourage you to do is don't do it alone. Don't do it by yourself. Amen. And I just want to say God bless you and keep you. May he continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Till next time. God bless. Amen.